Hey there, listeners. We got a brand new version of the Stay Current app. So if you haven't already, go to your app store, search Stay Current in Pediatric Surgery. You can listen to podcasts like this, watch technique videos, look at infographics, guidelines, try our new interactive cases. We like to call them story casts. There's so much for you to do there. I'd hate for you to miss out. But until then, enjoy the episode. I want to try a little exercise. I want you to really think, how many articles are you sitting down and reading every week? And I mean really combing through it to analyze it. Now, how many in a month? How many every few months? How many do you think you're reading every year? Do you think you read a lot, a little? Do you think you're on par with your peers? Do you think you read 2.5 million articles a year? Because that is the 2015 estimate of how many publications are going out there to the world every year. It's a lot. So how do we keep up? I mean, there used to be that we would have like one journal we would read through. That is Todd Ponsky. And when he created this Stay Current app, he ran into this very issue. There's just no way to keep up. When you're at a conference and people are referring to articles they read, most likely you've never read that article. So how do you know which articles are good? How do you know which articles are maybe not so good? Or maybe you use our Stay Current app and you're curious, how do we choose the articles that we post on your newsfeed? That is a very complex question. And it takes us to Santiago, Chile. Let me introduce you to Dr. Jose Campos. We have so much information, so many articles. It's actually impossible to stay, to stay up to date, to stay current. Jose is a really interesting pediatric surgeon. He's always happy. He's always laughing. And for some reason, he's always post-call. But on this December day, he talked to us while he was prepping for a Chilean barbecue. I think it's safe to say that Todd was a little jealous. It's kind of fun here. I'm sitting in Cleveland and there's snow over the ground. He lets us look out his window and there's this gorgeous view of the beautiful city beneath the him. Andes Mountains in the background. Now, I'm sure that Jose can cook a mean steak, but the reason he's a part of our team is he has another talent. He's really good at finding articles that, turns out, a lot of pediatric surgeons are interested in. So this comes from, from, from a personal frustration that I had during training, that I, I found that I couldn't trust the book. Uh, information takes 10 years to get into a book. If you find something that it's actually not true anymore, it takes like 20 to 30 years to get out of the book. So I found myself, God, I want to do better for my patients, but I'm reading something that might be, might take 30 years for me to learn it new again. So Todd and Jose obviously agree on this concept of information overload, but they're pediatric surgeons in two different continents. So how did their paths cross? I've been making it my mission to try to identify the important articles from the Journal of Pediatric Surgery. And so we've been thinking, how do we identify them and how do we disseminate them? How do we get, pick the best ones and how do we get everyone to know about them? Because there's too much information out there. And so we um, have been looking at using artificial intelligence and crowdsourcing to try to find the best articles. Uh, and then I was at an IPEG meeting and- uh, this, is, this is a great story. <laughs> here's this guy who comes up to me and, um, and he, he says, you know, nice to meet you. Let me tell you what's wrong with your app. And he was totally right. We're actually looking at the exact same thing. We're trying to identify the most critical articles, but in non-pediatric surgery journals, because we all read these journals, but the best stuff is probably not in our journals. And here's Jose's side of the story. I need to tell him that if he wants to get things going for this app, we need to look at better information and we need to look at these other journals, which we have uh, called non-core journals. Uh, all these authors reaching to JPS are actually doing a great job. They're doing great work. It's just that there's a hierarchy to, um, is that correctly said, hierarchy of, of journals? 
there is a hierarchy and it's very daunting. So how does he do it? Uh, how are we doing this? So we are a group of 23 volunteers working under the roof of the Chilean Society of Pediatric Surgeons. So first comes the, the journal selection. We started at, by looking at the top 10 surgical journals. We filter them through impact factors. That's top 10 surgery journals, not pediatric surgery. Then we took the top 10 pediatric journals, again, selected by impact factor. So that's general pediatrics, not pediatric surgery. And we took already the top three clinical. I mean by that Lancet, Nature, uh, Medicine, uh, JAMA, uh, New England Journal of Medicine. Yeah, those are definitely not pediatric surgery journals. So that is about 1,200 articles per month. That's 1,200 articles a month that are not in our pediatric surgery journals. And the first filter is to say, go through the table of contents, reading through title and abstract and say, is this relevant to pediatric surgery? Yes or no. And from that selection, we, we pick that around one to three percent, which is about 35 articles each month. So his team boiled it down from 1,200 to 35 articles that aren't in our pediatric surgery journals, but might be important for you to know about. Filter number two is a crowdsource, sort of say, selection. So we make a poll uh, and each month we send this poll out as a Google form. We promote it through social media, through email in our society. So anyone who wants to go read through the uh, 35 uh, titles and abstracts they they say i think this is relevant this is not i think it would take me a couple weeks to get through a survey like that and the top 10 they get reviewed by three panelists three volunteers that have some sort of expertise and they just if the top 10 it's okay it goes just from the crowd to the public that's it but sometimes the crowd will say, will overlook an article that's really important. So we just correct it. So generally it's just, we take three out, we take three in and something like that. Like that. And that's how we come up with a top 10 of monthly selection of journals. That's how we do it. Then that list gets uploaded to our State Current app. So that's the dissemination part. And actually, if you grab your app right now, you go to the article sections, you go, you're going to find your your uh, tiny icons uh, of JPS, PSI, European Journal, and next to them, there's a plus sign, which is kind of a curated content. And there we put everything we find that it's outside these journals, we put it there. We've been hoping for crowdsourcing. So part of what we did on Stay Current is the way we started the app was let's put every article out there. Let's let people like it or not like it and use the crowd to determine what's the best content. Uh, that was the original design of, of why we were hoping the crowd would help us. And then at the same time, Alex Kassar uh, did research in our lab to see if we could predictably identify good content. And we did this with the APSA meeting. We, we looked at the AI machine, would look at the abstracts and see if it agreed with the editorial board, which it did uh, very, with a very high degree of sensitivity. Um, so those are the types of things we think we're going to be heading to in the future. But in the meantime, you know, we just need to rely on people like Jose who have a methodology to identify the non-core journal articles. We will still be looking at the core journal articles and together figuring out the most engaging way of getting people to pay attention to these articles, whether it's through video, audio, animation, how do we, you know, infographics, getting it out there and and this is going to be how people will stay up to date and current with what's new in pediatric surgery. I think this is a good kind of introduction, segue, however you want to call it, to um, Jose and how he's a part of our team. Because looking forward to the new launch of the Stay Current app, we're hoping to do these more frequently. And we're hoping that Jose, as your schedule as a pediatric surgeon allows us that we can still chat with you every now and then when these non-core articles come up. So um, we're happy to have you. Thank you, mate. You can count on it. Definitely. 
how did you listen to our podcast today? Was it on the Stay Current and Pediatric Surgery app? Because if not, I hate to break it to you, but you're missing out on a lot of content. Videos, infographics, technique videos, podcasts like this. We even have channels now. So you can go to our colorectal surgery channel and just look at content for colorectal surgery. Or maybe you love IPEG. We got an IPEG channel. Scroll through videos from previous conferences. There's so much for you to do there. You're going to want to download the app. But until next time, I'm Rod from Cincinnati Children's. And remember, knowledge should be free.